Welcome back here with us on Trading Hour. Marco reported a largely inline set of numbers for the third quarter. The company saw domestic volume growth of 2% within their core segments. Parachute coconut oil saw a 3% volume growth. And Safola edible oil saw mid-single digit volumes decline and a 26% value decline. The company expects revenue growth to be positive in the fourth quarter. To know more about the performance, uh, Mangalam caught up with Saugata Gupta, MD and CEO of Marico. Let's listen in. Well, Marico reported a largely inline set of numbers as the company had guided for in the third quarter itself in their pre-quarter update. But importantly, demand sentiment continues to remain weak. What's the way ahead? We have with us Saugata Gupta, who's the MD and CEO of the company. Saugata, thank you for joining in. Always a pleasure speaking with you. And that is really the first question, you know, demand continues to remain weak. What do you think has to happen for demand to recover and volumes for the industry to recover? So I think uh, two factors that uh, drove that sluggishness in demand. One was, of course, that you do, uh, you know, during the COVID times, uh, a lot of small players uh, were, uh, you know, out of the market because of, you know, supply chain and other issues. Now, what happened was subsequently, uh, during the you know the, the next uh, couple of years which is uh, from 22 i would say 22 quarter 3 22 23 quarter 3 onwards uh, two things happened one was post ukraine there was high inflation and whenever there is high inflation uh, people tend to either downgrade or titrate on fmcg and that's where the smaller players got in and therefore there was overall consumption pressure especially in rural and also some you know, some kind of a switch over to either unbranded or smaller brands. Now, what you're now seeing is, uh, I think if you really look at it, uh, any recovery, the first signs are off-take uh, growth. Secondly, it's followed by secondary sales and primary sales. The additional point which I would like to mention is because of uh, slightly stressed market credit, as you know, in that in the general trade, uh, revenues have dropped, but costs have gone up. Uh, you know, the GT distributors, the market credit has also reduced. As a result, STRs in the retail has also reduced. And, and for our brands and average, it has moved down from at least three to four days. As a consequence of all this, I think there is a stress. But what we are seeing, beginning to see is a improvement in offtakes. And that offtakes uh, will lead to, obviously, buoyancy in pharma in secondary and uh, then the primary sales. So I would say that uh, inflation has tapered off. Uh, we see this year, again, continued investment by government in rural and therefore gradually this recovery will happen. Having said that, yes, it has taken, I think, two, three quarters more than what was anticipated earlier. When do you start to see, according to you, the first signs of volume uptick coming in for you, which is over mid single digits, moving towards high single digits and then eventually double digits? Would you have a glide path to that? So I would say that... Uh, in the immediate term, I think even this year, this quarter, while we delivered a you know two percent growth, uh, uh, if we had taken the corrected uh, inventory into account, it would have been four percent. So I believe that uh, coming from I mean going, it will gradually improve, and coming from quarter one next financial year, things should get into mid single digits. All right, and double digits would be the second half of uh, the next financial. So double digits, I think it's, uh, it's 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 difficult to right now give an estimate because I think what we at least can see is a kind of a you know we can see the visibility of improved volumes to a mid single digits definitely over the next you know couple of quarters. All right, and uh, what does mix look like in terms of price versus volume? Uh, would you have any early assessment of the trends in FY25? So for us, it's, as you know, our portfolio is slightly unique, but uh, this was the last quarter of, I would say, price deflation. Mm. We have anniversarized most of it. So coming from next quarter, we will start getting revenue, uh, some slight price inflation. Uh, next year, as things stand now uh, for us, uh, could be slightly inflationary for Copra, but that's very good because that's the sweet spot where we maximize, you know, uh, volume gains. Uh, I think crude, again, is difficult to say because crude also depends on a lot of geopolitical considerations. But I think the the pricing uh, action has bottomed out as far as we are concerned, and especially for our core brands. And uh, for Safola itself, I mean, a 30% price correction over the last one year or so, when does that anniversarize? What kind of growth do you anticipate in the Safola portfolio over the next one year? 
So that we anticipate uh, we'll be happy with a mid uh, single digit volume growth. So full anniversarization is mostly complete. It will get completed in Q4 to Q1. And there would be some remnants of Q1, but mostly in Q4 to Q1. Now, interestingly, we have come back to prices that prevailed when the Ukraine war started. So if you look at uh, you know February uh, 22, uh, it was you know a gold which is the bellwether and the largest pack gold one liter Sephora gold one liter was around 150 ish we are at 160 so we have now reached that broad bottoming out which has happened right now so i think uh, so therefore next year the entire volume growth will translate to revenue growth for Sephora which is currently not the case and would that mean uh, further margin expansion as well because i mean this year you are likely to end at 21% given your guidance uh, do we see that range continue into next year so as I said that, I think we uh, would like to deliver uh, low to mid-teens, uh, you know, profit growth next year. Now, it will depend on a combination of volume, uh, some on mix. And obviously, the other interesting thing is that two of our businesses, which have grown significantly in the last four years, which is food and digital, we have made significant improvement in profits. Uh, we expect, uh, you know, at least uh, next year, the overall digital business to start delivering most of the brands are uh, breaking even or close to break even. This year, one of the digital brands will break even. And over the next uh, three years, the digital business is expected to get into double digit EBITDA. You know? So that will also significantly help in, uh, you know, as far as the core is concerned, obviously the margins are maxed out in international business there are opportunities again in middle east you know and this one again in international business we got impacted by currency depreciation i hope that that will anniversarize and sometime in the second half that will also stabilize all right so you did speak about uh, ebitda break even and uh, you know double digit margins in a lot of your premium personal care and digital first brands itself Let's speak about the food business. Uh, an annual run rate of close to 750 odd crores. You expect that to double in the next three years. Uh, where does that portfolio stand in terms of profitability or burns coming down? Burns have come down. I think uh, we have made some strides in gross margin. One of the reasons we slowed down this year a little bit is we wanted to get the entire foundation right in terms of our supply chain cost structure and our stock freshness which we have got and we now want back we would like to be back into the momentum of 20 percent plus growth i think uh, we did 18 percent this year we are also excited by uh, one of our acquisitions where we have taken a strategic stake clicks uh, it operates in the wellness nutraceutical space an exciting set of products very strong brand very strong digital marketing skills and gradually next year we would like to we have not even leveraged the general trade for both of our digital brands that itself will then uh, have scope for further expansion and growth. So I think overall we are bullish about foods and uh, the first, I think the first point we have been able to cover is right now the gross margin combined of food and digital business is higher than our existing business. So we have now crossed the first hump. I think the second one is we are looking at overall bleed to go down. I think we have had a significant shift in our bleed. I think as far as Marico is concerned, we want to be seen as uh, able to one of the very few companies to profitably scale up digital brands, you know, and we are on the right direction on that. Food will take maybe one more extra year, but again, food also has the visibility of, you know, gradually improving EBITDA. So, you know, these two, which are contributing to around the portfolio, the digital, I mean, digital foods and the diversified portfolio, including premium personal care, which contribute to 20% of our current top line. I think in the next three years, four years, we'll start delivering uh, margins which is in the teens and high teens i think that's uh, that's the aspiration okay important news